Hi, right, what's up, guys? Um, in this video, I'm going to be going over the new th uh, Act 7, or Book 2, Chapter 1, whatever you're going to call it, um, review thing that, I'm, uh, that Marvel posted. Um, I did the beta, so I'm going to go over this, and yeah. So, opening up a, a new book in a contest, basically, just the backstory. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, so there have been a lot of conversation recently about the design and intent behind quests, especially story quests. We've taken those discussions, requests, and reimaginations to heart and applied them to the brand, br brand new act, uh, book two, act one, chapter one. Just call it fucking act seven. That awaits you. Before folks jump in, we'd like to share some of the guiding principles we use to shape book two. Okay, right before I go over this, guys, I know you're not going to change it to act seven. Just do it. And no one wants to say book two, act one. But I think Kabam knows this, and they're too far deep to care anymore. Fair enough. Uh, empower players with more meaningful choices and quests. So what that means is I'd probably give you more options than just, like, a character that has two counters. Um, <laughs> Mysterio. Uh, respect players' investment of time, money, and champion choice. I think the same thing. Uh, re reward more player achievements and punish fewer losses. I guess that's the same thing. Reduce players' mental load and let them spend time more time enjoying the quest. So don't make it bullshit, I'm assuming. Overall, we've reshaped story content to focus more on player enjoyment, engagement, and challenges so that entice you to try them more than discourage you from attempting. So without further ado, uh, here's the lowdown in the skinny behind book two. What the fuck is that sentence? Here's the lowdown on the skinny behind... I, I don't know what that was, but I'm just going to pretend it didn't happen. Um... I did the beta, by the way, and it was really good. So as long as it didn't fuck shit up, um, which is you can never write out Kabam on that one, um, should be good. But I think Kabam has gotten a lot better this last year without fucking shit up. They've had a lot of good. Uh, this year's been pretty much overall good, I'd say. Uh, below, we've broken down the fundamentals of what you're going to find inside Act 7. Uh, one act composed of four chapters, so same thing. Each chapter consists of six quests, same thing. Uh, each quest composed of six paths with six encounters per path. Only six fight per path. I don't remember it being that short. I could be wrong, though. I don't know. That seems really small. And then three final bosses, which is basically the six paths in a quest. And there's three bosses. So you're going to have to fight each boss twice instead of, like, you know, 6.2 Mr. Sinister that you have to fight ten times or whatever it is. So that's really cool. Uh, one choice node per path. Uh, basically what it is, is it's like the thing in Incursions, where right before you go to the boss, you get to switch out a character, which is very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, we've returned to the uh, t uh, tried and true format of six quests per chapter with four chapters per act. What do you mean we've returned to it? I mean, I'm pretty sure it was always like that. Four chapters and six quests in each chapter. Okay, we've moved away from the larger format map, so... Stop on it... Act 6, and crafted quests with fewer past nodes and fights. Basically, they just made them smaller, which is good and bad, I guess. It's good because if there's a bullshit node, you don't have to do it like a thousand times. But it's also bad because you're getting less content, I guess. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Along with the uh, older format, we've brought something new, choice nodes, using functionality uh, from the impressive incursions quest. We're able to bring in choice nodes to story content. Oh, okay. From inside the quest, players will be able to swap out any single non-KO'd champion for a 5 or 6 star on the roster. Basically, you get to change a character as long as they're not dead, which in the beta was very fucking good. Because you could use, like, ghostful team synergies to get to the boss, and then right before you can take out, like, a useless synergy member like Hood or something, and replace it for someone who'd really be good for the boss. Another new feature we've brought to Story Con is the addition of multiple final bosses, yada yada yada, we all know. Um... But yeah, this is actually good. It won't brick wall players because if you don't have a character to like say like the six point one crossbones, you can just pick a different boss, which would be good. Um, quest breakdown energy cost six paths, twenty three nodes per path. So it'll, average quest will be sixty nine energy for completion and four hundred fourteen from a fully exploration which is cool. Um, okay. Uh, the new class of buff. In the past, story content tested the limits of players by making demands on their roster to deliver specific buffs and debuffs, all while expecting expertly timed skill checks. We're not looking to deviate from this intent, but instead making these demands the bare minimum necessary for progression. We're choosing instead to reward players to bring the optimal, optimal skill and champion to the challenges presented. 
Uh, playing into the demands of nodes and opponents will see players gaining more power, doing more damage, and surviving fights with greater ease. Basically, what they did in Cavalier Monthly Difficulty, they'll give you buffs for certain classes. Um, I'm going to be honest, when I did the act content, um, the beta, I think there was this in the beta, but I don't remember like using it really that much or like noticing it as much as the Cavalier Difficulty. I could be wrong, but I just remember just kind of using ghosts for most things, uh, but we'll see. We'll also acknowledge that sometimes luck just isn't on your side when you crack a new crystal. Occasionally, you've got a great champ who just happens to be one of the few who can't do the thing that their class is known for, um, I guess. Well, for those who find themselves in those situations, we've got a brand new set of buff nodes designed to improve the abilities of players who bring the right class of the champion for the fights ahead. These buff nodes reward optimal player with the optimal class, improving champions who may not be god tier without boxing the ones who are. Listen, that's good and all, but my only concern is making it way too easy. Newer players just cry, cry, cry. Um, and listen, the game needs to have an element of challenge, or else it's just I don't want to. I don't want to walk all over X Seven because then there's no fun in that. X Six made me cry and just like have mental breakdowns because it was really painful at some points and i don't think it should be that painful but it should it was also very fun and very like it felt good when you finished it finally because you needed a big thing i worry they're gonna make x7 too easy but we'll see so for skill shake it off skill attackers purify one debuff whenever they dash backwards the number of debuffs purified increases by one for every dash performed in a row that's really good for suicide masteries. So basically, you can go into the fight with like a Nick Fury, and Nick Fury isn't too good for suicides because in his second phase, he only starts with 30% health. But if I could just start the fight and instantly get rid of them, then that's pretty fucking good. Cage Rattler, I remember this one because I used Aegon in a path. Uh, whenever a skill attacker, whenever a skill attacker is blocked, so if ever you hit into their block, they have a 50% chance to passively stun the defender for two seconds. So put a passive stun in them for two seconds through their block. Uh, and the stun chance is increased by 10% for every five hits in the combo meter. Which means um, 25 hits, you're basically guaranteed to break through their block and um, stun them. It's pretty OP. For There was this one path, I think it was Aspect of War, I used Aegon. With this node, it was really good. Double down, whenever a skill attacker fails to apply a debuff, uh, due to the defender's immunity, they gain a uh, precision buff instead. This is decent. Um, this is for Mystic. I'm surprised they used orange text for it, but whatever. Uh, whenever uh, a Mystic attacker knocks down the defender, the attacker gains an unstoppable buff for six seconds. Uh, if the attacker was already unstoppable, they instead gain an indefinite fury, increasing their attack by 50%, and you can get four furies, which is 200%. It used to be, I think, a 50% chance to gain an unstoppable when you knock them down, but I guess they buffed it. This is for the... Um, can't stop won't stop path in the beginning i remember using this with claire and she was really good for this one mystic focus and whenever a mystic attacker holds block or charges a heavy they activate a power gain uh buff uh providing five percent of their max power every second for the duration of block or heavy i don't really remember this node i don't remember uh what path it was on because it was probably not that good but i don't know I don't remember. Whenever a Mystic Attacker activates a special, they poison the Defender, dealing 60% of their attack, rating as direct damage over 7 seconds. The potency of the poison increases 25% for every buff on the Defender. So I do remember this node. I used Claire for this. It was on a hard path, if I remember. It was a path that starts with Terax, if I believe. And I forget what the node is. But basically what you want to do for this node, um, you'll see it. Uh, it has Terax in the front, if I remember. And basically what you want to do is actually i can pull it up um google docs so look you basically just want to use claire and you want to spam heavy in the poison phase and then special two so where is this it i, I remember it was one of these I, I wrote down all the nodes and which characters to bring um see this is the one with muscle wizard uh, wizard um this one and then there's one with claire uh, 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 clairvoyant, uh, clairvoyant, uh, this one was really not fun, but I think Namor is going to cheese it, because I didn't have Namor before, but I don't think it was that one, um, tragic, uh, you guys probably saw it, I probably missed it, but 
there was a path and you basically just want to be use clairvoyant turn off suicides i think is ideal spam poisons can i think i think on that path the poisons give them buffs and then you nullify them with your special two and you have to be in your poison phase because i'm pretty sure it gives them a shit ton of power so you have to power drain them and then it puts a big poison on them and she was really good for that um so yeah that's a cool one i remember doing it very i vividly remember it even though it was like over two months ago uh and patient um wait, is this impatient or impotence i don't know whatever i might be retarded whenever a cosmic attacker fails to trigger a buff due to chance they have a 100 percent trigger to a fury buff instead increasing the attack by 80 percent so i just remember uh what was his name hyperion every time you don't get your fury you get a fury <laughs> so it's pretty fucking broken with him i remember that Cosmic Fracture, Cosmic Attackers, Light Attacks have a 50% chance to armor break the defender. Um, this was really good because there was a path. I think it was Chitinous Thorns and Hyperion was good for it. Um, so yeah, I remember that path. Um, not really that hard if I remember correctly. Cosmic Avalanche, whenever a Cosmic Attacker is activated special, they have a 40% uh, Fury buff. The duration of that speckle, uh, special attack for each unique buff on them. I think this was a good one because it was a path that gave you a lot of buffs. I can't remember. I don't remember it being that useful though. Mutant Mastery. Uh, whenever a mutant attacker applies a debuff to the defender, they have a 40% chance uh, to gain an indefinite prowess buff, increasing its special attack damage by 30%. This chance increases by 20% for each debuff. Um, yeah, I remember... I don't think I remember using this at all because I don't think I have any mutants that have a shit in the debuffs. Oh, actually, I know. I think um, I think this worked well for Magneto. I can't remember, but this one I don't think I remember using. But it's very OP if you can do it. I don't remember like I think I just used Ghost on whatever path that was on. Uh, every five uh, acclamation, every five hits in your combo meter, mutant attackers purify all bleed, incinerate, and cold snap debuffs currently on them. Uh, any debuffs purified by this way provide the attacker with ten percent of a bar power. Um, I remember this. I think this was on a biohazard path. Um. I can't remember, but I don't remember it being super useful, especially considering I think it was Biohazard on the path. I could be wrong because I did this like two months ago, but I, I think most god tier mutants are already bleed immune anyway. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it could be useful. Evolutionary advantage while the defender is suffering from a bleed, armor break, or concussion debuff. Mutant attackers gain an indefinite fury, increasing attack by 70%. Uh, the Fury is removed and the Defender no longer has these debuffs. I don't remember this really being too useful. I don't remember this path. Okay, Power Suppression. This is Science Characters now. I'm going to get two more. Fuck it. This is a lot, guys. Um, and, of course, we'll get to the rewards, but this is the information. If you want to go to the rewards, you can skip there. But Power Suppression. Whenever a Science Attacker activates a Special Attack, they apply an Enervate debuff to the Defender for six seconds, preventing them from gaining power when struck. Whenever this Enervate would expire, it can... Assumes an entire debuff on the defender to reapply itself. I don't really remember what path this was on. I don't even remember the node at all, so I really don't think it was that important. If I don't remember the node, it probably wasn't that like needed, <laughs> but maybe not. Backfire. Whenever science attackers perform well time block, uh, well time block, they apply a parsing debuff for five seconds. Um, I think this was good because I think the path was like an act six where like you need a power sting to do damage. So it's super easy to bring a science character and parry. I think in the Act 6 one, you needed like Mr. Fantastic Synergy. Or you needed um, Yellow Jacket, and that's who I used. Uh, it was painful, but this makes it a lot easier. This one's Eat Crow. I remember the name of this. I just don't remember what it was. Um, science attackers gain immunity to nullify. Whenever a nullify or poison fails to apply to the attacker due to immunity, they gain a passive fury, increasing attack by six sec 80% by 6 seconds. Oh, I just realized with the E crow, I could just look because I remember I put the nodes. So yeah, um, yeah, E crow, clap back, E crow buffet. Um, apparently my team was Magneto, Quake, Ghost, a second Ghost, Archangel, and then the boss was Scarlet Witch. Um, I think the reason I put boss equals is because I think in these two quests, the bosses are like those merged bosses, like. Um, Ice Phoenix, like a mix of Phoenix and Iceman, which will look like Iceman, like this one for example. Um, I think the boss looks like Luke Cage, but it's just basically Electro in every way. So it's cool, but the cool thing about these two quests is none of the bosses have their special three active, I remember. So you don't have to worry about that at all, which is pretty interesting. So yeah, 
Um, and then finally, tech uh, class. Whenever a tech attacker activates a special attack, they have a 100% chance to heal block the defender for 8 seconds. If the defender is already heal blocked, the attacker instant, instead gains a fury for 70%. Pretty good. I don't remember this one at all, though. Fortification. Uh, while all tech attackers have an armor buff, they're immune to bleed, poison, cold snap. That's really good. I don't remember this. But most... But like the best um, robots already that have armor bu buffs like Warlock and Guillotine twenty ninety nine they already are immune to these two and Warlock's immune to Cold Snap, so I really don't know. Um, whenever they receive the debuff they're immune to, they get a passive um, Fury. I think this is on a path with Biohazard. I could be wrong. Actually, we can check Fortification. For is this it? Fortify? Hey, fort? No, that's not. <laughs> oh, I just went full dyslexia. Uh, whatever. We'll look at it later. The gloves are off. Whenever a tech attacker removes their own armor buff or it expires, uh, or it is removed by an armor break, they have a thirty percent chance to gain a fury buff. Um, that one doesn't seem that good. All right, six star service. As powerful as six stars are, uh, it can be difficult to give them a spot over a more valuable five star champion. Uh, to help players get through the rigorous, the rigors of Act Seven and entice folks into dusting. Off their six stars, we've added three new global nodes to add a little extra oomph and add a lot more sustain. Uh, these six star boosting buffs are going to become a staple of Act 7, so you can count on them to be there for you for your six stars for all the other chapters. I remember these, um, I remember them really being useless as far as I can remember, but maybe they buffed them. Let's see. The attacker gains up to 100% damage reduction at all times, scaling with their current adrenaline. I don't really remember what the fuck this even does. I don't. I was using the six stars during the beta, and I don't remember this like coming into play at all. But maybe it was happening. I wasn't noticing it. Uh, the attacker gains up to eighty percent block proficiency at all times, scaling with their current adrenaline. So does that mean like? See, if the, if it didn't have to do with adrenaline, it would be a lot better. But it does. So does that mean like if you have a crap ton of adrenaline, like you guys got hit by a special two that did like ninety nine percent of your health? You have like 80% block efficiency. This is 99% of the time going to be useless, but whatever. And then 700% attack rating. This is just decent. I, I don't remember it making that much of a difference, but it's still just something to have. Uh, boss buffs from beyond. Uh, okay, so bullet time. Anytime the defender is stunned, they immediately... Okay, this one I remember. Anytime the defender is stunned, they immediately remove the stun and gain evade charge with grants. A 100% chance to evade each time a hit is evaded. One evade charge is removed. If the attacker avoids a basic attack using the uh, dexterity mastery, all evade charges are removed. And the defender is passively stunned for 1.5 seconds. Um, I don't remember the second sentence. I think when I was doing the beta, I was kind of rushing it. <laughs> I think this was on a um, Black Widow Deadly Origin, and it was really... She was one of the more challenging bosses when I remember. I think she was in the first quest. Um, but I didn't know using dex stuns them. That probably makes a lot more sense because I remember I think she had like stun vulnerability on her or something. Um, yeah, I guess we'll see. I should have read the whole thing. I could have saved myself some stress. I mean, not really, I was stressing during the beta, but whatever. This one's pretty easy to counter, I guess, just dex. Uh, redlining, when the attacker is more than 33% of their max power, they gain a power gain passive, which raises their combat power rate by 100 if the attacker has more than 70 uh, five percent of their max power they immediately power drain down to zero um basically what this is is it lets you get to your special twos a lot faster just don't go for special threes or you'll get power drained i guess um yeah i don't really remember this one but it seems like it helps us not it helps us a little bit. I don't know how useful it's really going to be, but whenever the defender is struck by a basic attack, they gain a tantrum charge. When the defender is knocked down. All tantrum charges are removed, which deals a burst of physical damage equal to 10% of the defender's attack onto the attacker. While the defender has a concussion, destroying, enervate, taunt, or debuff, the tantrum charges are removed without causing damage. So I remember this. This was kind of just annoying. I think this was on a full path. I think you just basically can't throw specials with like ghost or something because when you knock them down, you just die. So this one was kind of annoying. I think. How to remember? Defective defense blocking attacks has a one hundred percent chance to apply a destroying debuff to the attacker, reducing your block efficiency and def defensive ability accuracy by twenty five percent for twelve seconds. 
basically if you block four times you got four of these on you and you basically have no more block and you're gonna take full damage through the block uh, the chance is reduced by 50% oh, um, if the block was well timed like a parry uh, the attacker can dash back and hold block for 1.2 seconds to remove one of these debuffs um, I just used ghost so I kind of just ignored this so mm, sucks if you don't ghost uh, special burst lockdown 2 whenever the defender activates a special attack the attacker is afflicted with both a heal block and armor break debuff. This basically was just a counter ghost node, if I remember correctly. It just you can't use ghosts because every time they do a special, you get a armor break debuff on you. Actually, maybe you could use ghosts. I think you just have to wait out the armor break. I don't know. It's just not fun. This one's also a ghost counter one that I remember. Whenever the defender is struck, whenever time you hit them, there's a 40% chance to get armor on you. Basically, um, just don't use ghosts and you'll be fine. Uh, arrogance every 10 hits on the attackers combo meter afflicts them with a falter passive uh, falter causes their attacks to miss in the last three seconds when the attacker is struck uh, falter is removed I don't really remember this one I, I kind of remember it um, but yeah um, I don't remember really honestly mercy this is the one from act 7 beta the first one, the shit one, um, this note is ass, but I think it's only on one boss, and Archangel and Quake kind of just bullies it, so, not as bad as a full path, um, just, if you want to see what that node looks like, I showed a video of Archangel one shot in this bullshit aspect of War Mercy Sabretooth, that has like over a thousand views on the channel or something, Staggering Beauty, every time you get close to the Defender, you gain a Stagger debuff, just don't get close to them, if you have a shit ton of buffs, uh, cold fusion whenever a cold snap or frostbite expires or is purified by the champion the defender gains 33 percent of a bar power so if you purify one of them they're gonna gain power i mean i guess so like ghost and iceman i don't know high energy diet the defender has a 99 percent energy resistance any hit that deals energy damage regenerates them so just don't use an energy character while the defender is inflicted by an incinerate shock or cold snap um, debuff the defender gains 100% of a bar power every 10 seconds so do not use energy characters and do not use characters that um, put incinerate shocks or cold snap power build up when the defender reaches two bars of power they didn't they gain an indefinite prowess buff every two seconds I mean just watch out for those specials I guess um, power overflow if the defender has 10 prowess buffs when they activate a special attack it becomes unblockable probably mixes with this note I don't remember um, so these are like the mixed ones. I'm pretty sure the mixed bosses. I was telling you about like the Electro Luke Cage. It's just a Luke Cage that has Electro's abilities and specials. Night Carnage. I think it was. Who did it look like? Um, I think. Oh yeah, it was Carnage, but just he's. Uh, what's that character's name? Night Thrasher. No, no. Um, Night Crawler. Punishing Angel. It's basically was it again i think it was it was punisher and someone i think we can just look down here to see which boss it was uh angela i think it was just angela yeah it's angela that looks like that just has punishes abilities ice phoenix is just an ice man basically spider witch i think it's just a was it was it yeah it's a scarlet witch that looks like spider gwen um, I don't know if she can evade though, I can't remember. And then Gwenpyrian, it's just a Gwenpool that has the animations of Hyperion. Um, yeah, um, pretty much it. And then we got to the things that we all came here for. I just want to see if anything else is done here. Okay. Uh, so these are the rewards. So the rewards, I think, are pretty good um, from what I've seen. Yeah, actually, they're really good. Uh, so for just completion, you get a 25% tier 5 CC crystal, which was, I think, in the past for Act 6, that was in the exploration, so that's pretty cool. Uh, 6 star rank up 1 to 2 gem crystal, so any class, you get to just rank 2 them, pretty nice. Uh, a few 6 stones, pretty much nothing really. Uh, 10,000 6 star shards, a million gold, which is very sexy. And for the exploration, we have another... 25% crystal so just from the first chapter alone you're getting 50% from two crystals and a 25% uh, CC selector So you get a fourth of any class which is very nice. So in total you're getting Basically 75% of a tier 5 CC, but um, Two of them are 
two of the uh, fifty percent of it is random, and then twenty five percent is choice, which is very nice. Six star nexus, which is very nice indeed. Twenty generic six star six stones, um, that's very nice. Uh, probably gonna put them in a mega red. Uh, more six stone crystals and a million gold. So in total, pretty good rewards. Um, I don't know for sure how good they are. I'm trying to think. Um, I think obviously the best things are like the generic six stones, the um, Nexus and 10,000 six star shards, the, um, and then there's the T5CC. Those are just very helpful. And then one-time pickups. Um, these one-time pickups were each quest map. So each quest has two of these. So there's 12 of these in total, am I thinking that right? These one-time pickup rewards are located throughout each quest map. So every single map has these twice. So it's gonna be six or 12 in total, right? So 12 times this, 12 times this, 12 times this. Is that right? Am I doing the math wrong? Um, I don't know if I'm doing it wrong. I think I'm doing it right. Well, if you can get this six times, just this one alone, it is six thousand. It's nine thousand six star shards. If you do every quest, I could be wrong, but if that's true and that's really good, once again, also I could be doing something wrong. But yeah, I mean, this just looks good. What is this in total? You get um, two of these in a quest, so you get six tier five basic in total. That's crazy. You get what six tier two alpha in total. Oh no, you get nine tier two alpha. That's really good. Damn, uh, I didn't look at these the first time around, but that's really good. If it's the way I'm thinking it is. Um, so that's cool. So we get an extra nine thousand six star shards. Maybe if I did the math right. So that's cool. That is cool. We got all these catalysts, which is very nice. Just in the quest, you can pick your path. Um, and that's everything you need to know. Uh, mythic summoners and legends. We're up to the legends program. Um, so basically, they're changing the title to mythic, I guess. Um, summoners will have a 30 day period December 9th through January 8th and to attempt their legends run. I'm not doing the legends run because fuck that. Um, but let's just see what the rewards are. Um, instead of time, start the quiz. No, we're looking for the fastest total fight time. So, does this mean they're going to be adding up the fight time? So, I don't think it's from start to finish. You just have to do the fights fastest. Which means... Which means I could do this without actually trying to do it. Which is interesting. That is interesting. I never. That's a weird way they're doing it. Unless I misread it, they're basically just gonna add up all the times you were in fights. Um, that's cool. Um, this also means that the time you spend adjusting your team, moving on the quest board, activating boost energy refills, your even your midday nap will not factor your legend stuff. Yeah, that's cool. That is cool. This is cool. That means I might go for it. Um, let's just see. So the points no one gives a shit about. Six through one hundred will receive the legends title. So the legends is like still there, but it's not as crazy as the mythic title. So you have a tier five CC, twenty five percent selector, uh, twenty six stones, um, generic, a six star Wolverine weapon axe. That's pretty cool. And the top five is the same six star weapon axe. Um, 50 generic six stones and a 50% tier 5 CC selector. So it's not like crazy, but it's definitely still good. I'm trying to think, should I even like go for this now? I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Um, there's a lot. This has probably been a long ass video. I apologize. But if we go through this, um, I already have my spreadsheet on all the nodes and which teams to bring. Which means I could maybe attempt the time. Um, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Because I have all my teams. I might have to adjust them a little bit. But, yeah. But, like, when they say, like, you can switch someone for the final boss, normally I just switched, like, Hood from the Ghost Synergy for a different character that's good for the boss. Because I only bring the Hood Synergy. 
so like I don't take recoil damage, but if it's the final fight, I don't really care. So that's a very nice thing they added. Overall, Act 7 was pretty good that I remember. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Give a like, comment, subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.